All right, everyone, happy new year and welcome back to the channel. I'm very excited to make this one because it's one I've been wanting to make for a very long time, but we finally have the right guitar to make it. So let's see how the Helix handles jazz guitar tones. Come on, let's check it out. <laughs> All right, so the guitar we're using is a Eastman AR372CE. Uh, basically, it's a copy of a Gibson ES175, but they are a little different. Um, this one, for instance, has Ken Armstrong pickups. It's just the stock ones that come with the guitar. Uh, we're only going to use the neck one for today. Uh, and then, obviously, another obvious difference is the ebony fingerboard and ebony tailpiece, or uh, excuse me, ebony bridge. Uh, that the Gibson does not have. So they will sound different. Uh, other than that, it's an all laminate construction, uh, maple back and sides and top. And one important feature we need to discuss is the volume and the tone. The volume is on about eight, seven, eight, about three fourths of the way up. And that's a big thing with jazz guitar that I think gets overlooked a lot is you want to turn that volume back just a little bit on your guitar and it'll help warm things up and the tone is halfway so roughly so about 50 percent uh that way if we need to darken it up a little bit more, a little bit more we can or if we need to brighten it a little bit we can as well and then also with the volume being rolled back a little bit we have a volume boost so let's head on over to hx edit and see what's going on over there okay so now we are over here in hx edit and this preset is going to use one amp model and one mic preamp model. So something a little different for a guitar than you would normally see. Uh, but we're going to start with the amps. So over here we have two amp splits. Uh, our top amp is a US double or the, the twin reverb as we know and love. Um, Basically with it, I tried to set the drive roughly about half, uh, 4.5 over here. Pull the bass back a little bit, push the mid just slightly, and then pull the treble back just a little bit. So it uh, it's pretty clean. And then I also pulled the sag back just a little bit, just so it doesn't compress too much. And uh, bump the channel volume up just a little bit. And then our cab for this is a Celestion IR. Uh, you can use the uh, the cab models that the Helix comes with if you like, but for this I use the IRs. So this one is a 2x12 open back Celestion Greenback, the G12Ms with a 121 ribbon mic on it. And the low cut and the high cut for IRs is really important. So for me, what I usually set them at is the low cut is at 85 hertz. And the high cut is at 6.9 kilohertz. And for me, that gives me a pretty decent, uh, or excuse me, a pretty realistic guitar cab sound. So that's amp one. Amp two, uh, we're going for what a lot of modern jazz guys do is they will blend a tube amp with a solid state amp like a uh, Polytone or uh, a Roland JC120 or something that's just very uh, flat and kind of neutral sounding or sometimes even like an acoustic amplifier like the AERs or um, the Hendrixons and like the jazz amps and that kind of stuff uh, or acoustic image amps. Uh, just to get a really flat kind of even response. So I'm trying to emulate that here. So the preamp is the Studio Tube pre a uh, or the mic preamp, but we're set for line sensitivity. That's real important because we're a line level instrument, so not a mic. So we want that as line. Then again, the gain, I just set it in the middle. Uh, it didn't seem to distort there and give me enough headroom and enough uh, kind of body to fill it out so I was pretty happy with that I didn't touch anything else except for the level I just boosted it up enough to match where the tube amp set 
Um, since this does not have an EQ, I put a little parametric EQ after it. So again, we're trying to keep it roughly pretty flat. But for this, I was just trying to kind of EQ out a little bit of the boominess or the frequencies that needed a little help. So uh, that's all subtractive EQ for this one. So I set the cues to, to the middle to five just to, so it wasn't uh, EQing the entire spectrum. I just kind of wanted it to be more of like a real amp would be. Uh, but our low is set at 125 and it's pulled back 2.5 dB. Our mid is set at 750, and that is pulled back 1.5 dB. And our high is at 8K, and that's pulled back 2 dB. And then I have a little boost here at the level just to kind of boost our, uh, our level back up since I'm subtracting so much there. And then the cab for this is another IR greenback, but this one's a 112 that's a closed back with the same uh, mic and EQ settings. So uh, I used to own an old, old polytone amp and to me this is pretty close to how it actually sounded. And it was a 112 closed back. They actually stuffed foam in it too, but uh, that's getting bonded. So continuing on, uh, the, the Fender amp is this top line here. So we have a reverb, and it's just a spring reverb, a 63 spring. Uh, the pre-delay is 25 milliseconds. And then the high and low cut, again, are kind of important, but uh, I didn't really touch them too much. For this one, I like to pull the high cut back quite a bit for the reverbs, just so it doesn't get in the way too much. Um, and then the mix is pulled back Quite a bit to where it doesn't get in the way so it's 22 percent for the mix and then we're also running a harmonic tremolo so the old fender amps had harmonic tremolo uh, for them so i like this one uh, for that reason but also i think it sounds better than the other ones do for this particular uh, usage all i'm really doing is pulling the mix way back on it and just adding just a little bit of it in there just to help the stereo image. So you can't really hear the the trim like going up and down very much. Uh, I'll demonstrate it here in just a second. But again, it, it helps just to add a little bit of stereo imaging. And then the, uh, the reverb for the mic pre amp that we're using or the flat amp that we're using is the dynamic call. I've really begun to like this reverb a lot. Uh, so it, again, it just sounds really good to me. And again, I pulled the, the mix back to where it doesn't get in the way too much. And I pulled the decay back because this one tends to go for quite a while. So uh, here's how just the dry amps sound by themselves. And I'm gonna kill the mic so you don't get any of the guitar bleed into it uh, but one thing I should note too is the twin is panned 100% to the left and the mic pre is 100% to the right so here's how that sounds <laughs> So it's actually not a bad amp sound. Uh, let me solo them and I'm going to uh, push a little switch that I have here marked for the pans. Here you can actually see the In here in the mixer I've uh, got a button controlling the levels and the pans for each amp here. Uh, so this is going to be just the twin and I have it panned back in the middle just so you can hear that amp. So here's the twin.
Okay. And then here is the mic pre amp or just the flat amp. <laughs> So that's each amp, and I'm gonna pan them back 100% left and right here, just so you can see what's going on. So again, both amps are back on and uh, panned left and right. Uh, adding onto this, we'll go one by one. So the first thing we have is the poly sustain. This is a big thing for jazz guitarists, uh, non-jazz guitarists as well, but especially for jazz guitarists, because we can play a chord and hold it and then solo over that chord. So for example, if I play like this chord. So I can hold it and solo over it as well. Uh, so that's the first thing in the chain is the poly sustain. Then we're just going into a volume pedal and always like the logarithmic setting better than the linear one for the volume pedal. Uh, I think it just sounds better personally, but either one works. Uh, then after our amps here, we're going back in just to three stereo effects. So the first one is just an analog chorus. Um, so the chorus, if we turn it on, it takes away a little bit of that stereo imaging that I was talking about a minute ago. Um, I'll show you what I mean. So here's with it off again, both amps. If we turn it on, here's the chorus. And again, I didn't really mess with any of the settings just because I think the analog chorus on the Helix sounds really good by itself. Uh, so if I turn that back off, and we come over here to this tremolo that I was talking about. Uh, let me turn it off for a second and play just so you can hear the amps with that, the tremolo off. And then if I turn it back on, so here it is with it on. So again, it's not a real dramatic effect. It's real subtle, but it does make a difference. Uh, especially if you're wearing headphones, you'll really be able to hear it. Uh, you might not be able to so much on like an iPhone speaker or something like that, but or a computer speaker, but it does make a big difference. So uh, the, again, that chorus was the first effect. The second, we're going into a delay, and I'm just using the tape delay stereo. Uh, and pulling the scale back to 67%, that way we get that dotted eighth kind of vibe. And again, I'm trying not to bring the mix up too much to where it really gets in the way. That's one thing I really like about the tape delays is the are always a little bit in the background and it's not right in your face. Uh, but with this, I will put the time at 500. I've always, I think it's 504 or something like that when it on the, uh, when you first pull it up, but I always tend to set these for 500 unless I'm doing a tap tempo. that always just seems to, to work with everything. Uh, and then pulled the feedback a little bit back to 45% uh, here. But the rest of it is pretty much the same other than, again, that, that scale uh, back to 67%. And then the last thing we have here is our reverb. And since I was running out of processing power here, we're using the Ganymede 
reverb, just again stereo. And uh, this one, all I really did was increase the pre delay a little bit, and again, just bring that mix back just so it's not totally in, in the way. So it sounds like this. <laughs> So it could actually probably come up just a little bit more. So the Ganymede reverb is kind of like a plate that's modulated a little bit, but not too much. Um, but personally, if I was going to use this, I would blend it with the, the delay. So it would sound like this. If I was doing a solo thing, I would probably use the uh, poly sustain a little bit just to hold out some chords if I needed to. Or uh, I actually find it interesting to use those as like uh, at the ends of songs or the beginnings of songs, like kind of that transition period just to kind of set a song up and you can get the tonality but still play around and play lines and stuff too. So uh, we're going to do that for the end of this episode here so i hope you enjoyed and hope you learned something and again thank you very much for watching and for checking everything out uh if you haven't already please subscribe to the channel because that really helps me out and the channel has been growing quite a bit over this last year so i'm very happy to see that and been getting a lot of comments from people saying that they really enjoy it and it's helping them out so i hope that continues and help more people out so again, have a good day and see you later.